SpaceX just released two new angles of the recent Flight 11 upper stage splashdown from multiple different drones. With these, it provides an extremely clear view of the state of the ship and how it held up during re-entry, along with better angles of the final flip maneuver. One angle in particular starts well before engine ignition as the upper stage belly flops toward the water. Here I'll go more in depth into the new footage, how the heat shield held up, the preparation for future catch attempts, and more. The first video is from a drone and in total is just over a minute long. At this point, Starship has gotten past all parts of her entry heating and is only a few kilometers high. It's currently over the Indian Ocean and just passed an hour into the flight test. By now, it's transitioned into its belly flop position. This uses the size of the ship to create drag and help slow the stage down before engine ignition. With the camera tracking the ship as it descends, one aspect that stands out is how stable this maneuver is with the ship barely moving. It also helps to have just about fully intact forward and aft flaps, which play a big role in controlling the ship during this mission milestone. Eventually, the stage enters the clouds and ignites its three sea-level Raptor engines. This swings the bottom of the stage to the other side before aligning itself vertically and slowing to just about a hover. They cut off one of the three engines, leaving just two. It then makes contact with the water, slowly tipping over with the video ending right before it explodes. If you match the time of events with the official livestream, you can get some added context related to the ship's altitude and speed with the new video. At the start, the ship is around 4.2 kilometers high and is traveling just over 415 kilometers an hour. Over the next 30 seconds, the altitude lowers to just over 1 kilometer and the speed is around 350 kilometers an hour. Right as it enters the clouds, it's only half a kilometer high and still traveling 300 kilometers an hour. Finally, engine ignition and the flip scrubs off all the remaining speed until the ship is almost stationary. In the future, SpaceX wants to catch the upper stage similar to the booster. That would mean the ship would attempt this maneuver over the launch site and surrounding area before hovering as the tower arms come together under catch points. Obviously, that requires some extreme accuracy with very little room for error. On the last flight, when SpaceX posted these extra angles of the landing, they said that the ship was only 3 meters away from its targeted landing spot. This time around, they didn't share exactly how accurate the landing was. We can assume, based on all the pre-positioned camera equipment, that it was close, but its exact proximity isn't clear. That being said, Flight 10 was 3 meters off with some notable damage to the flaps, while the ship was in much better condition, which should only help improve accuracy and control. Focusing on the state of the ship, it looks good, with some areas that were obviously stressed. On the livestream, we didn't get the best view of the heat shield and flaps in particular, however these new angles show it clearly. Looking at a still frame before the ship enters the water, both the visible flaps and the main heat shield structure are intact. We get an even better view from the second angle provided. This video starts a few seconds following engine ignition, after the bottom of the stage has already swung over. You can see the three Raptor engines gimbling as they work to orient the stage properly. It slows down before entering the water. Like the other angle, it starts to tip over and then the video ends. Taking a still frame, we can get a great view of the heat shield and flaps. One of the first things you'll notice is all the discoloration or orange and whites which we saw some of on Flight 10. In Flight 10's case, the orange color was from metallic test tiles that oxidized, and the white was from insulation of areas where SpaceX deliberately removed tiles. On this flight, SpaceX left large patches of missing tiles in areas where they expected the most heating, among others. They also pointed out that several of the missing tiles were in areas where tiles were bonded to the vehicle and didn't have a backup ablative layer. This means they were part of the ship that was just bare steel. Another interesting part of the video you can see is small flames coming from the top of the ship. This in addition to a decent bit of venting between the aft flaps. If you compare this to the video on Flight 10's landing, neither the flames or venting are visible. It's thought that because of the missing tiles, which were primarily down the center along with a few other areas, that there could have been some burn through in these spots leading to venting, small flames, etc. If that's the case, and small spots of burn through led to punctures in parts of tanks and or feed lines, it would be extremely impressive for the ship to survive all the way to a controlled water splashdown. At the same time, SpaceX knew this was the last flight of Starship V2, and wanted to stress test it and see how it could hold up even with tiles missing in core areas. Another part we can focus on is the flaps. Starting with the forward flap, it looks to be in just about perfect condition. Beginning with Starship V2, the design of these forward flaps was significantly changed, moving them leeward and becoming thinner and angled. One of the main purposes was to help improve reliability in addition to manufacturing and payload to orbit. On Flight 10, they also looked to be in great condition which suggests that the forward flaps seem to be in a good place for future Starship flights and reuse in general. Moving down, we then have the aft flaps, which have come a long way. Clearly, they were put through it during re-entry and exposed to a lot more stress. That being said, their main structure is pretty much intact. On a lot of past Starship flights, the aft flaps have struggled to stay in one piece with damage from re-entry heating. Even on Flight 10, with a successful landing, they had a sizable chunk missing. 
SpaceX has also been well aware and has been making changes just about each flight test. If you look at onboard footage and compare it, it helps give an idea. On flight 10, around 50 minutes into the launch, cameras showing the aft flaps clearly highlight reentry heating eating away at the bottom of the flap. Over the next 10 plus minutes, that continues until you have aft flaps that are partially missing and burned up. In this case, once a weak spot is found and plasma starts eating away at the ship, it creates an even larger area that's vulnerable to more reentry heating. On flight 11, around 50 minutes in, that same camera showing an aft flap is clearly in much better shape with no noticeable damage. Skipping ahead a few more minutes, basically nothing changes with the flap holding up well. This is a pretty big deal for the company as one of the biggest challenges for Starship going forward will be iterating and perfecting its heat shield. In order to launch again and again, it'll need to re-enter the atmosphere and be ready to stack and launch again soon after. Looking back at the video, if this is what the ship looks like with large sections of heat shield tiles missing in addition to the backup ablative layer, it suggests that a fully protected ship would be in very good shape post re-entry. It's also worth pointing out that SpaceX hasn't had a ton of opportunities to gather data on the heat shield. Flight 11 marks just the second V2 Starship to survive re-entry. In a few other flights, the ship was simply lost before the data could even be gathered. Videos like these give teams at SpaceX a lot of information for future changes and upgrades. On this launch, the location where Starship splashed down is actually the same spot as Flight 10. It seems that SpaceX teams are even more prepared around a landing location. In the drone shots, which there were two of, you could see multiple buoys in the background. For example, here you can see a yellow buoy floating not far away. In the other shot, an orange one is visible right next to the ship. With Flight 11 complete, it'll likely be a few months before the next Starship flight as SpaceX prepares for the first launch of a V3 Starship. In a lot of ways, that'll be a new rocket and will also launch off a new pad. Assuming those initial launches go well, the next step will be attempting a ship catch back at the launch site. In an official statement from SpaceX after the launch, they said, Starship re-entered the Earth's atmosphere and was able to gather extensive data on the performance of its heat shield as it was intentionally stressed to test the limits of the vehicle's capabilities. Starship performed a dynamic banking maneuver to mimic the trajectory that future missions returning to Starbase will fly. Starship then guided itself using its four flaps to the pre-planned splashdown zone in the Indian Ocean, successfully executing a landing flip, landing burn, and soft splashdown. Focus now turns to the next generation of Starship and Super Heavy, with multiple vehicles currently in active build and preparing for tests. SpaceX just released two drone angles of the recent Flight 11 upper stage splashdown. With these, we can see the state of the ship, which, despite missing tiles and ablative layers, looks to be in a very good condition. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.